Hi everyone, um, uh, my name is Bev Bag, and I am a teacher with Harvard Down Center and I offer a progressive ballet technique class every Friday morning and I just wanted to have, the, they have given me this opportunity to talk a little bit about the progressive ballet technique and actually show you, give you an introduction to the program that was designed by Marie Walton Mahon from Australia and basically it's a supplementary conditioning program for ballet technique. Um, it's all very centered around pelvis placement, stability of the pelvis and core strength. So it's very difficult to, I'm going to try and talk about it as much as I can because it's very specific to placement and um, to recruitment of muscles so that you actually increase your muscle memory uh, in certain aspects of the exercises. Um, it's centered around turnout, uh, around core strength, around adductor and hamstring strength, how you use your feet. So I can give you actually a full ballet class on the ball. You wouldn't, you would have to do no jumping, no turning. So it really is a very comprehensive program. Um, so basically what you need is a ball, a fit ball. The sizing is very specific to your height. So between five foot, uh, I would say four, uh, five foot one and five foot five, you would have to get a 55 centimeter ball. And if you were taller than that, you'd get a, 64 centim a 65 centimeter ball. And then if you're smaller, you get the smaller ball. So it's very important the height of the ball. And then you also need one of these little balls I have um, for, for the Allegro work and for some of the, the Adagio work. Okay, so I'm going to start. The program usually starts, I would do a warm up with the dancers. Um, we would want to warm up the fascia as much as you can. You can do any kind of these stretches, long stretches through the hamstrings. You can stretch through the hip flexors, but keep it all moving so you never get static. So you're pulling through the fascia tissue. Then you would lie, uh, the first exercise I'm going to show you is just basically a core strengthening exercise, finding your core and finding your hamstrings. So the positions on the ball are very specific and I'm going to ask uh, you to, you'll be lying on the ball on, on a mat, your feet are going to be in the center of the ball at a 90 degree angle. So you will be looking like this. The, the heels of feet are together. So not here, not there, but here. The feet are in the middle of the ball. Your palms are facing up. And I just want you to feel lift the pelvis off the floor. Now, you're pushing the heels into the floor and you're engaging into the hamstring. And I just want you to feel that when you're going into that, into that position, that the femur is really settling into the pelvis, into the structure of the pelvis. So you're going to do two times. You're going to go up and up and down, down, and again, pushing into the floor, up, up, down, down, then you're going to go up, up, now you're going to extend the legs, reaching the toes through the feet. It's not this position, and it's not this position. So the, the, the thigh, the hip bone, and the rib cage are in the same alignment. So you're using your glute, your hamstrings, in, and, and a little bit of the glute, and you're going to just walk through the feet, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then to find your core, you're gonna take the hands off the floor just to breathe, six, seven, and eight. You can close your eyes, palms up. You're gonna pull here in, don't move the pelvis, keep it nice and stable. Extend long, three times. Extend, hold it down, and then you're gonna slowly lowering through the spine, okay? Um, you can begin to play music and I'll show you the exercise once and then you can repeat it three or four times. Um, the, the feeling on the floor is as if you're standing. So you want to maintain your natural spinal curves. You're engaging the transverse muscles. You're putting the belly button right up against the spine. So you're connecting the front, the front of your belly button to the, the front of your spine. Yeah, and then, the, and then the shoulders are released and the back of the neck is long. So be careful you're not in any of these positions when you're lying on the floor, that your shoulders look like that. All right, so it's very nice and long as if you were standing on the floor. 
Um, thank you. Here we go. Breathe in. If you, when you're feeling a little bit stronger, from here, keeping the pelvis nice and stable, you can take the, hand, the foot off, the bar, one foot off. And then when you're even much stronger, you can start to do the extension with one leg on. But don't do that until you've really spent months doing the other exercises so that you really build up the muscle memory and the strength. Then the next exercise that we usually start with, that was just a warm-up. And what you can do, and um, what Marie has said, is that when you're doing that exercise, you can use imagery. So you can just put yourself into another space and use imagery. You can close your eyes so that you really feel how you're tracking the legs and that you really are stable in the pelvis. And you can just think about your day or think about when you're doing that exercise, what you would like to improve. Is there one aspect of your technique that you'd like to really focus on? Because there's so much information that you're going to be getting and you're going to be fed in this next half an hour that, um, that you, can, you can take it baby steps at a time. All right, so the next exercise is for turnout. The legs are wrapped around the ball. So the position is very specific. You want to start with the ball really close to your pelvic floor. If you have a hyperextension, which I do, the legs are going to be a little bit higher up on the ball. If you don't, the legs are going to be a third of the way up on the ball, so a little bit lower. Why for the hyperextension? Because we don't want you to be locking into the back of the knees. So you're going to start with the legs wrapped around the ball in this position. So I have a hyperextension, so I'm going to go a little bit further up. Those of you that don't can be a little bit further down the ball. And I'm going, you're going to take your, again, your, your, the placement of your upper body is really important. Natural spinal curves, you're not tucking the pelvis under, the pelvis is neutral. The ribs are soft. You're going to take the arms into first and into second. And when you go into second, you're going to reach into that same bridge and you're going to take the legs up and there's a bridge. Now there's a difference between this, right, and then keeping the pelvis dropped. So you want to have the pelvis, the hip bone here, thigh, hip bone in line, the, the ribs is soft and your arms are in a nice second position. And you're going to go point and flex, point and flex, point and and then you wrap the legs to the side. Now the turnout is going to come from the deep inside of the rotators, which are right underneath your big back muscles. And you go flex and point and flex and point and flex and point and back to parallel. And flex and point and flex and point and flex and point and turn up. That's basically the exercise. We will do the exercise once or twice. 
and then I'll stop and then I'm going to uh, explain to you how you can progress because it's called progressive ballet technique. Alright, so here we go. Uh, This is long, the traps are relaxing, flex, stretch, flex, stretch, reach, and wrap. Good. Reach the legs long, open the front of the joint. One. one leg at a time in the flex and the stretch and the rotation and you will find if you have not if you don't have the stability in the pelvis the board is going to start moving so it will look a little bit like this here you'll use one leg you'll do flex stretch we can do one leg at a time and you wrap one and you turn it in and you wrap the other and you turn it in now if you don't have the pelvis you'll start to move and then the pelvis will start to shift. So it's really important. And then you can start doing a circle on one leg. Three, four, five, six. Really make sure you're activating the turn up right underneath, deep inside those rotators and not, right? And, and not turning out from the quads. And because you're not weight bearing, you can't turn out from the foot. You have to turn out from the whole leg. Okay. So, after that, we get up, we shake our legs up. We might want to do a little bit of a stretch into our hamstrings. And we go to tondus. So, we can do tondus in two ways. You can do tondus. I like doing it from parallel first. And what I sometimes do is I put the ball between the legs. And, we can, and, you, and you extend the legs. You've got a ball. You can put the ball between your legs this way in parallel. You can actually work through the foot, and this is part of um, the new program, is you can actually work through the foot, and you can take the foot off the floor. Now the whole thing about doing it on the ball is the ball will give you a lot of feedback in terms of how stable your pelvis is. So what you want to find is some people find it very difficult to just take the foot off the floor without moving the ball. So you really have to use your transverse muscles and those tiny little muscles in your spine to when you're sitting. So you can do this with both feet and then you can take the leg off and off and in. And that ball is going to tell you how strong your pelvis is because what's going to happen is you're going to take the ball off and you, the ball is going to move. The sitting position is very important. I'm just going to show you sideways. When you're sitting sideways, you will see that some bounces are going to be like this and some dancers are going to be really arching in the lower back. So you want to actually again have a neutral pelvis. The hip bones are facing the front. Try and relax the front of the leg. So you want to try and relax the hip flexors, right? And you want to feel those abdominals. So when you're actually moving the leg, nothing is moving. It's really still. The important thing, we're going to do it from first position, right? And there's a progression to this, but we'll just do the very basic. Your arms go into first and to second, and from here you do, you want to sit on the not you don't want to sit too far back on the ball because you won't be able to move your legs. So you want to be a little bit further forward on the ball. Make sure your feet are really connected to the floor. Don't over rotate the foot. 
So make sure the turnout is happening from the back. This is nice and long, your abdominals are lifted, and we're just gonna go brush and close and brush and close and brush and flex and tendu and close. To the right, the left leg, flex and we're just gonna do that a few times, all right? Then we're gonna go extend, coup de pied, extend, lower. Extend, coup de pied, extend, lower. So we'll do brush, same leg, three and four and five and flex and stretch and flex. One and two, three and four, five and flex, same and close. Extend, coup de pied, extend and down, extend, coup de pied, extend and down. This is gonna happen, right? So be really careful. The ball needs to stay absolutely stable. Thank you. Open and out, in, out, in, out, flaps, stretch, other side, one. Try and keep that ball really still. Five, six, seven, eight. Breathe in, breathe out, in. Breathe in, really use your breath, one, we can stay there, flex, stretch, from the left, one, two, three, and long, one more time, rush, don't let the hips lift, flex, you'll see that what will happen is as soon as you start to isolate moving that leg, you're gonna do this. And you really want to feel that curve does not move, right? So the next progression from that is actually from fifth, you do the same, and then you can go on to demi. And to find the core, you can go on to demi point in fifth position, and you take the leg off, and you will feel you should not be moving. Everything should be nice and stable. Right? So those are just, the, that is a, the progression of this. We can progress to PKs. You can go to the side. You can do run de jambe. So you can basically do a full tendu exercise on the, on the, on the sitting on the ball. Yeah. Um, as I said, the ball will give you feedback because the minute your hips start to lift, the ball is going to shift. So you really don't want that to be happening. Right. The next exercise I'm going to show you, so we've done plies, kind of ish, we've done tendus, we can do degages, we can do run de jam, and now we're going to do batman fondue. So be careful with the batman fondue on the ball, we're going to do um, little promenades on the ball. Now for the very basic, for the very basic, you're going to want to do batman fondue, you're going to, it's, it, it's actually to shape your attitude to bomb. Right, so again, if you hyperextend it, you're going to have a little bit more of the leg further over the ball. Do not look at my toes because I pull my toes and that is an absolute no-no, but I always have. So I find it very hard to lengthen my, that's how you should be looking, not like I'm looking. Right, so that's really important. You're going you're gonna to have, now the position of this is really, really critical. You've got the head of the femur sitting right into the back of the joint. This front of the leg is lifted, so you're really standing over the center of the foot because the progression of this is you're going to want to go into a rise. But that's eventually, right? So your arm is going to go into first. Now you're going to roll the leg back into attitude. When you do, you want to feel the femur, the head of the femur really rotate outside. Now the, the interesting thing about the ball is you can't sickle because then your heel's touching the ball. So you want to really have that heel lifted off and extend and plie and extend and plie and extend and hold. 
That's for the very basic beginners. Just so that you understand where to place the leg on the ball. When you roll it, you feel like the head of the femur is really the knee. Don't think of it coming from the knee dancers. I want you to think of it coming from the top of the, the femur bone. That's what moves sideways. And then your heel is spiraling so that you're really not sickling and you're shaping the heel off the ball and extend. When you're comfortable with that, then you can try to think of at the end of that, you can go into a rise and a lower. Yeah, both legs are rotating. So this leg be aware that it's not rolling onto the toe. All right. So after that, we start to do Batman fondue. So you do fondue, 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 and then you tiny little promenade a la second. And then you fondue, and you fondue, and you have, but then you tiny little promenade to the back. Now, the important thing is this side has got to be lifted. This is long. The hip is not lifted because the ball will roll. Then you fondue, and you fondue, and you fondue, and you stay. You plie as if you're landing from a jump, and you come back to where you were, and you hold that there, and then you will do that the other side. Okay? So, we'll do the second one, and you'll do it both sides. I won't do it both sides. All right? Um, I was going to say earlier that this is like this is structured like a ballet class, and the music is to ballet music. So every every exercise has a beginning and an end, just like you would be doing in a ballet class. So if you're doing it at home, you're going to really discipline yourself to finish the exercise as if you would be finishing an exercise at the bar, and you're starting an exercise on the introduction with a port bra as you would be doing at the bar or in the center when you're at your home. All right, so placement of the ball, it's in the hip socket, it's not out, the hip is not lifted. Headlights, these are my two headlights of my hip bones, and these are my two headlights. And they're facing the front, don't twist. On the introduction, you're starting, and the arms, thank you. Breathe. So it teaches you how you really need to place your working leg in that hip socket in all the different positions, as well as understanding that any promenade does not come from the working leg, it comes from the supporting leg. So you can't move the ball around to make yourself change from one position to the other. You actually have to use the supporting side. Alrighty? Um, so I can, we can be here for two hours actually, because there's so much detail. The last exercise I'm going to give you is actually preparation for a leg row. So, after fondue, there's adage, there's core stuff, there's abdominal work, there's ground back mass, there's pirouettes, and then a leg row. So you basically can do a whole comprehensive one and a half hour ballet class on the board. 
it's very interesting because even those few exercises that I have just done, and I don't do it, I, I teach it, but I don't often demonstrate. Well, I demonstrate maybe a little bit, but not do the full exercise. It really taps into your nervous system for some reason, and I'm, it makes it really shaky, which I am right now, a bit shaky, but that's okay. Okay, so you need a mat. Now this is probably four exercises, and there are three different levels, or four different levels. There's a sub-junior, a junior, a senior, and an advanced level. So comprehensively, there's probably hundreds of exercises that you can do. I've given you three or four. Right? So there's so much scope in this program. You're lying on your back. Now again, the placement of the ball is very important. If you have a hyperextension, so you're not locking into the back of the knee. The ball is underneath your heel bone, which is where I will have it because I do have a hyperextension. If you don't, the ball is between your heels. And this is, a bit, this is the first little allegro step, which works on how to articulate through the foot um, when you're jumping and when you're landing, and how you take off from the foot and how you land through the foot. You're lying on your back. The position of the spine doesn't change. Now for those of you who have tight hamstrings and find it difficult to, because you're lying on your back with your legs up at 90 degrees, if you find it difficult to do that, you can put your legs against a wall and you put the ball on the wall so that you're not putting yourself in such a 90 degree angle so there's a little bit more of support for you with the legs on the wall. So you're lying on your back. I have the ball underneath my heels. 90 degrees, wrap. My, my hands are behind my head, right? And now I have not tucked my pelvis under to make this position. I'm, I'm supporting my abdominals. My rib cage is soft. The feet are stretched. And your toes are long, not like me. And then you're gonna go toes and ankles, ankles, toes. Toes and ankles, ankles, toes. Small plie, wrapping the top of the leg, extend through the toes. Small plie, extend through the toes. Toes and ankles, ankles, toes. Toes and ankles, ankles, toes. Plie, jump, plie, jump, plie, jump, plie, jump. And then we're going to repeat it again. All right? So first a leg row. The important thing, dancers, is that when you're rotating the leg, you, you're feeling it rotating from this underneath this back muscle here. That's where your deep rotators are. That is what is facilitating your turnout. And then the, the, the adductors and the hamstrings and not the quads are supporting that turnout. Yeah, the turnout does not happen from the quadriceps. It happens from six deep little rotators which sit underneath your back muscle and then the the feeling the bones moving the bones move sideways and the, the bones that move sideways as well is your tibia bone so there's a little bit of movement in the knee joint you allow you can allow the tibia bone to spiral as well all right so here we go start Jump, plie, jump, plie, one more time. 
enjoy that work, I'm sure you will. It has awakened so much in me as well and made me realize my weaknesses and I'm sure that you will have fun doing this program. Thank you Harbour Dance for inviting me and thank you dancers.